But and I, now you're reading about the guy you arrested like, giving this up. You're like, oh, oh I was wrong. Well, I, I left the CIA in 2004 thinking I was wrong. And he just decided then, I'm going to kill every Jew I can and every American who supports the Jews. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. It was one event like that. The long arm of foreign policy. <sighs> so that began the hunt for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. And, um, you know, once we had an identification... When, when was when was uh, Abu Zubaydah tortured? Was it after Sufan talked with him? Well, that's kind of that's kind of the uh, the kicker in this whole thing. So here's Ali Sufan just breaking new ground and writing all this stuff up. But remember what I said: the FBI computer system is not compatible oh. with the CIA computer system. So wait, you don't have CIA guys sitting in there with him? No. And the CIA were sitting there like this, like, whoa, we, we wonder what Abu Zubaydah is saying. Jose Rodriguez is fucking hitting the fucking <laughs> hitting mm -hmm. the charges together, like, let's go. And this is, <laughs> this is a long answer to the question you asked about me when yeah. I said that he was waterboarded once and he broke. Um, so for reasons that have never been explained, on July 31st, 2002, George Tenet went to the White House and met with the president. And he said, I want you to remove the FBI from the secret site. And I want the CIA to have primary, primacy rather, on Abu Zubeda. And for reasons that have never been explained, George W. Bush agreed to do that. He said, you're going to give me WMD in a wreck. Mm -hmm. You got yourself a deal. That's right. <laughs> so the FBI knew exactly what was going to happen. And, and... Uh, uh, Mueller, what's his first name? Robert. Robert Mueller, who was the FBI director at the time. Oh, sorry. You're good. It, that doesn't affect the mic at all. Good. That doesn't. Robert Mueller, who was the FBI director at the time, decided to withdraw all FBI personnel, not just from the secret site, but from the country that the secret site was in. He's like, we know what these CIA guys are going to do. They're going to go completely nuts. We don't want any part of it. Everybody withdrew. Within 48 hours, the CIA began to torture Abu Zubaydah, right? The so-called- And they haven't been shared any information? No. Nope. So the CIA still doesn't know about Khalid Sheikh Mohammed? That's unclear. We don't know if maybe Ali told some colleagues and the colleagues told the CIA, but whatever happened, we had these two CIA contractors out there, two psychologists who had come up with the torture program. Right. What are their names again? Mitchell and Jessen. They live in Florida now. Yeah, they're both 60 million or something? Yeah. Uh, altogether, 108 million. Oh, yeah. nice. So Mitchell and Jessen begin torturing him mercilessly and they waterboard him 83 times. But why would you waterboard somebody 83 times? Because the first 82 times it didn't work, right? He didn't give you anything. He didn't give you anything at all. In fact, he just clammed up. So what they did was they went into the FBI computers. They pulled out Ali Sufan's reports. They retyped them in the CIA database. We know this? Uh -huh. This is from the Inspector General's report of 2005 that was released in 2009. And they said, oh my God, we waterboarded him once and look what he gave us. We need to look for this Khalid Sheikh Mohammed guy. And somebody called Dusseldorf. So we're getting these reports. I don't remember this. Wow. We're getting these reports back and I'm at headquarters and I, I remember saying to my boss, holy shit, maybe I'm wrong about this. It, it looks like it's actually working. It's still deplorable. Oh, because this immoral. was when we got off this earlier, but you, when you came back from the Abu Zubaydah thing I in got May, promoted. you got promoted and someone approached you and said, hey, you want to be, yeah. you want to be trained in enhanced interrogation? I said, not a chance. I, th I said, I think it's illegal. It's immoral and unethical. I don't want any part of it. But and I, now you're reading about the guy you arrested like, giving this up. You're like, oh, oh shit. shit. I was wrong. Well, I, I left the CIA in 2004 thinking I was wrong. Wow. It, in 2005, the inspector general said, wait one second. None of this shit was true. It was all stolen from the FBI. And then they declassified that 
in 2009. The reason why it wasn't so newsworthy is because it was released on the morning that Ted Kennedy died. And so all the news was the end of the Kennedy era, right? And it was kind of buried. Oh, that's on purpose. They're like, oh, Kennedy's dead. Yep. Hit him. Do it now. <laughs> I mean, otherwise they would release it at seven o'clock on a Friday before, right. before a Monday holiday. That's right. Yeah. So um, they had called you behind the scenes, though, like the human rights guy or something. Yeah. yeah right. You yeah. were like made fun of at CIA the for being against guy. torture. Yeah. I was the human rights guy. Why did you? I'm, I'm just curious because you've just come back from Pakistan. You just mm-hmm. captured a really bad guy. You know, we're nine months, eight months past 9 11. It's in the heat of the global war on terror. And yet at the time, you have the presence of mind to be able to step back and, you know, not to say humanize these people, but you're like, U.S. Constitution, there are rights. We need to be above that as America. What I what be- made you so automatic with that? Oh, I believed very firmly that we're we're either going to be that shining beacon of light for human rights and civil rights and civil liberties, or the shining city on a hill, as Ronald Reagan called us, yeah. or we're not. If you want to get into the mud, you you debase yourself. And you put yourself on their level. You know, John McCain once said, never get into a fight with a pig. You'll both get dirty. Pig likes it. But the pig likes it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're better than that. We're supposed to be better than that. We can't debase ourselves. Were there other things you had seen at CIA before then, though, in your 12 years before that conversation that weren't necessarily torture, but were things that technically broke the Constitution that you went along with? No. Really? Yeah. Nothing. No, especially during the Clinton years. I mean, it was all about rule of law during the Clinton years. They were really, really serious about nobody doing anything illegal. In fact, the Bob, Clintons. The Clintons. Bob, Come on. Bob Bear, I know, right? <laughs> Bob Bear is a pretty famous former CIA officer. Um, he's written a bunch of books. One was made into the movie Syriana that starred uh, George oh, yeah. Clooney. Yeah. So Who Bob is. Bob is Gagan? Re- yeah. yeah, Bob is retired and and living in uh, Colorado, and uh, and Bob took it on the chin during the Clinton administration because he he had developed a, a network of sources in northern Iraq and was making plans to assassinate Saddam Hussein, which he believed to be in the national interest, and NSA intercepted one of his communications. And sent it to Sandy Berger, who was the national security advisor. And Sandy Berger called the CIA and said, your guy is going to do a, an extra constitutional assassination. Either you pull him back or he's under arrest for conspiracy. So they pulled Bob back out of Iraq and they, and they, um, they told him, you got to go. That would have changed history. Yeah. Yeah, so they they were serious, but once nine eleven happened, man, everything changed. Everything, and that's what I'm saying. You did, you really didn't, though. No, I didn't. We're either a nation of laws, or we're not. Because th- this this is this is one of those issues where, and this happens so often with me, where I'm right in the middle yeah, of sure. you and Bustamante. Sure, because I don't know where to, it's it's. First of all, the any time you use the line, especially in high stakes scenarios, that if I were blank, then I would blank. That is a dangerous thing because you don't fucking know no, you what don't you know. would do. You don't know. Okay? Not until it's presented to you. That's right. And you got to make a, a decision. But when when I listen to you, like, because I, I I admire your stance on this a lot and, and, and how much, I, like, you have walked the talk with this for the last 20 plus years of your life yeah. in every possible way up to and including fucking going to prison for yeah, it. I have. So I admire that Thank a you. lot. Sometimes I wonder, though, I'm like, man, here you have a guy who was a savage spy. Like, you did some real shit. You were talented. You got really high up in the CIA. You were about it. You you obviously care a lot about the country and being able to protect it and all these things. Yep. But there's a small part of it where I'm like, is John – not even that this – makes you wrong, but it's just a complicated world. I'm like, is John too much of an idealist on certain things? Dick Cheney once said that he would rather imprison a hundred innocent men than to let a guilty one go. Yeah, see, that's fucked up. And I'm 
the opposite of that. Yeah. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.